Welcome to Become Famous Podcast, the ultimate destination for achieving fame in your industry. Join us for discussions as we uncover the strategies and secrets to becoming known, navigating cancel culture, and staying authentic. Stay tuned because here at Become Famous, the journey to fame begins now. Well, welcome to Become Famous. I am really excited to have Aaron Gordon from Keep Hustling. And he is the host of the Keep Hustling podcast. And I was fortunate to be on his podcast. And I was like, you know, you have to come on mine because you've got so many interesting things to talk about. And he's passionate uh, insurance advisor and business leader. And I want to, and he's a New Yorker. So welcome. Uh, Thank you for having me. Welcome. Uh, I feel like I don't even know. I haven't sat on the other side of this. I do a lot of interviews and now i'm sitting on the other side but i will just give one if i can give one disclaimer my goal is within the first 90 seconds of this conversation after this disclaimer that my new yorkness becomes blatantly obvious and that people will feel like that that was a a waste of breath but let's do it let's bring some attitude let's have some fun and uh, i'm really really honored to be here and i appreciate you having me on Yes, and I love the New Yorker in you. And I uh, was so fascinated because we were talking about in your podcast on how successful you've been by being an insurance advisor and then utilizing Keep Hustling and the New York Risk. And I would love for you to tell your listeners on how you have done that because you're an unconventional guy, but you're getting unconventional results as well. Well, that's very kind of you. Um, I I don't know about the results, but I I think that... One of the things that I discovered in my career, and I am not as seasoned as many of your listeners, and if anyone has any feedback or comments, let me know because I'm I'm all into hearing that. But I think that especially now in 2024, in the world that we live in, what separates humans from bots is the fact that we're humans and not bots. And I think that if you're selling a product or a service, And everybody is selling a product or a service. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter any, you you have to be selling yourself. And I'm not a big brand builder. I'm trying to build a brand now. I haven't built a huge brand, but I just felt and I feel that if I want people to do business with me, they should know who I am. And the old days, it was traveling to trade shows and meeting people at booths and doing things like that. And I still do a lot of networking events, but I just feel that we have to put our best foot forward in developing who we are. And then when we develop that, we should, we shouldn't be ashamed to show that to the world. And nothing that I'm doing and nothing that you're doing and nothing that anyone else is doing, if they're doing it right and if they're hustling, should they be ashamed of? So therefore, if I'm not ashamed of it, the world should know it. And, and it can be conventional, unconventional. It can be through a hashtag, through having license plates that say NY risk. The greatest joy I get is embarrassing my children when someone actually recognized my plates. And. <laughs> You know, it's, it's true. And it's, and, 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 and not because, not because all of a sudden it's going to make me a billionaire. But I feel like every once in a while when you're building something and when I fight internet bots every single day, I'm in the industry. My, my, the, the way that I feed my family and pay my mortgage is in an industry that is the most advertised industry in the entire world. Personal insurance in the United States of America is the most paid for advertising industry in the world. You cannot turn on the radio, the television, open any sort of publication or drive down any major highway or go through any airport or any public building basically without seeing an ad for progressive all state Geico local, the general, any of those, any of those insurance companies. So what differentiates me from them? Well, I think that they're, I think that they're bots or widgets or mascots are annoying and weird. And I can't figure out why anyone would buy from a gecko or an annoying lady whose name is Flo or someone whose name is Mayhem. I I can't imagine that someone would want to protect their assets with that, but people do it. So why not showcase who I am? And that's what Keep Hustling is about. And that's what Becoming Famous is about, right? Showcasing who you are and what what makes you unique. And by the way, just I know that I'm like long answer to a short question, but but the other amazing advantage when you do that, and this is a personal growth hack for me, is the people who don't want to do business with you the only reason why they don't want to do business with you is because for some reason it's you. And wouldn't you rather want to know that? I, I, I don't know why someone wouldn't want to talk to me. And I don't know why someone wouldn't want to talk to you or do business with you. But if that is the case for whatever reason, because I'm a New Yorker, because my plates say at my risk, because I have a little bit of that edge, I'd rather not go down the process of prospecting you and spending a lot of time with you just not to like me. 
I'd rather you just know my personality from what I'm building in the social, in the social network. So I, and that, that, that's not New York attitude and that's not ego. It's just, I, I feel like that everybody should be thinking about that. That's so interesting. So how did you come up with New York risk and keep hustling? When was that moment when you, uh, when you decided to do all of this stuff? Cause it's quite, it's quite a great brand. Sure. Well, thank you. Um, the, the New York risk thing, I was sitting in my attic in April of 2020. I have, uh, at the time I had four children. Now I'm blessed to have five. And I was sitting there thinking, this isn't going to work. This old school way of doing business isn't going to work. I actually think that the old school touch will continue to work. But the way of just waiting for referrals to come in is not going to work because nobody's going anywhere. I didn't realize that people would be moving a lot and that mortgage brokers would be, would still be the best referral sources. At the time, again, it was April 2020. Everyone was staying put and thinking about how they were going to survive. And I just said, you know what? Maybe I'll just be the risk guy. The world's risky right now in New York and all the handles were available for NY Risk Advisor. So I said, let's jump into the social media thing. And I, you know, I obviously NY Risk and then the plates were available. And I kept, I, the plates took me a while to come around because I was like, do I want to be that guy? Do I want to be that guy? Do I want to be that guy? And then I said, you know what? It's the same kind of thing. It's not illegal. It's not immoral. I'm not doing anything that anybody would have a problem with inherently by being the NY risk advisor. It's just, you know, it's what people, people say sometimes like if they see me run through a yellow light, they're like, well, the NY risk advisor is doing something risky, you know, and not being the insurance, you know, not being the proper insurance, but that other, short of that, that's what it is. The key puzzling thing is, is, is I don't know when I started using it. I just started using it. And I feel that I feel that hustle culture in the United States of America has gotten a bad rap. And this whole idea of hustle culture where if you don't get up at four o'clock in the morning, first, I think it's cold plunge before sauna or is it sauna before cold plunge? I, I forget these days what they've come up with. It's, you it's have to, sauna and then it's cold plunge. Right. So, so first you got to see the natural light. You got to go outside. You got to see the natural light. You got to watch the sunrise as you're meditating. And then you got a sauna. Then you got a cold plunge. Then you got to drink. 20, you know, 2000 ounces of water. And I don't believe in any of that. I believe that that is for the individual and what keep hustling means to me. And that's why it's the sign behind me. It's every single one of my social media posts includes it is the lifestyle and the mindset of defining your hustle, redefining your hustle if you need to and sticking to it and keep hustling. And your hustle is different than my hustle. And my hustle is different than my wife's hustle. And my wife's hustle is different than my children's hustle. And it's different than my neighbor's hustle. And that, everybody who says hustle culture, hustle culture to me means one thing, that you keep hustling and you put your best foot forward every single day in the best way you can. And if it's burning you out, you know what you do? A great way to hustle is to redefine and just Ooh, stay on that. Oh, 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 that's really, 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 really powerful. Could you elaborate on that? That is really, really good. Yeah, sure. I appreciate it. Well, first of all, I, you're giving, my ego is, is going to be under, uh, you know, I, I think that people so often, let me say this. One of the advantages of the last four or five years in the United States of America is that people realized that they could be who they are and what they are and that success can be defined by the individual. And I'm not getting into people's family politics or whether people should go to college or how people's career should go or when your career should start or when your career should end. But I fundamentally believe that the most powerful thing that a person can do is learn themselves. This above all to thine own self be true, I think is from Shakespeare, I believe. And if a person does that, then hustling is easy. Because in the end of the day, my father, he's a rest of the beast, used to say the only person who's looking at you in the mirror is yourself. I'm an identical twin, so maybe it's somebody else looking at me in the mirror, but that's not for now. But there's, and the most powerful thing a person can do is redefine their hustle. And I think that one of the things that every person has to do is set those time demarcations where they take that time to redefine their hustle. And to reanalyze our song, by the way, you might say what I'm doing right now is great and I don't need to redefine it. And I'm going to continue what I'm doing for another six or eight months or a year. But when people have those moments, you have to, you have to find the moments and you have to redefine your hustle. And then you have to say, by the way, this doesn't mean I failed because the most success is saying, I know who I am. I know where I want to go and I know how I'm going to get there. Or I think I know how I'm going to get there right now. And I'm going to keep hustling through that. You can't, you can't say that the guy, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'm a big sports fan, right? Mm-hmm. Imagine the athlete who trains their whole life and then has a tragic injury. Trains their whole life to get to the pros and then has a tragic injury. 
and can no longer do what they've been training for for the last 20 years or 22 years? Would Keep Hustling be them trying to do exactly what they were doing before when they're sitting in a hospital bed or when they're doing the rehab? No. Keep Hustling would say, let's redefine. Let's see where we are. Let's see where my goals are and how do I get there? And that's going to be physical therapy and things like that in that example, right? But it's not going to be going to the gym six days a week like I used to at at five o'clock in the morning when I was playing in the NBA. It can't be. And by the way, that's why so many people, not to get too philosophical here, but that's why so many people have tragic retirements and become shells of themselves when they re- when they retire because they've never thought about what that means and they've never redefined what that means to them going forward. And so therefore, they think that they have to be the exact same person that they were yesterday when really Keep Hustling says, figure out what your new hustle is and just keep hustling right through it. You know, it's interesting you say that because I think what happens that they don't redefine or you get to a certain age where it's hard to redefine because the culture around you has seen you a certain way. So I think that's maybe where redefining is hard for some people. I don't know. Sure. But I'm just saying everybody needs to at least give it some thought. And it doesn't mean that you failed if you're redefining your hustle. Could you hustle? By the way, you know what the hardest thing to do is redefine it and actually execute that. Get out of the comfort, get out of the status quo. Super hard. It is super hard. Wow. So, um, so you started your podcast in 2020 then, or how did it go? No. So the podcast is, so I started, so I, I started the, the identity that is keep hustling and NY risk advisor. Then I started using keep hustling, I think in 2020, 2021. And then I don't know, people just started calling me the keep hustling guy. And I said, maybe there's something here. And the other part of hustling that I think a, a lot of people misunderstand is that Everybody has had to hustle through something in their life. Even the richest people in the world who you think are the most successful, there has been a moment in their life where they quote unquote failed and had to keep hustling or they were quote unquote challenged and they had to keep hustling. And what I'm trying to do with the Keep Hustling podcast is to interview people who are successful, who people may think through the media and through everything else that they're seeing have it easy and talk about how they got through those moments that they needed to. Because everybody has those moments. Everybody. And the question is, how do they keep hustling through it? Hmm. So I would love for you to take a step by step because I think you're kind of a role model for people. Uh, a lot I hope people. not. Yes, why not? I don't know. Why not? Because you, you, you learned of an idea and you kept to it. And it became part of your identity and you maximized on the identity. And uh, I would love for you, when did you decide to do the podcast? Like, when was it that? Last summer. So a year ago, I decided my friends were pushing me. I had been on a bunch of podcasts. People said, you know, you should kind of do your own podcast. Yeah, that New York edge. Uh, And then one of my close friends and mentors said to me, uh, send me this statistic. And I know that they say that like 80% of statistics are fake, but we'll just go with it anyway that like 90% of the podcasts on Apple don't get past one, like 80% don't get past one episode. Another of the 10% that are left, another 90% don't get past three episodes. And the best, the best get past 50. And I'm like, that's a challenge. So I actually uh, committed to doing 50. Um, I had a lot of fun with the whole technical aspect of it. And I also feel that if the Keep Hustling guy gave up, then what am I? So I just, I started reaching out to people, friends and family first, because that's a podcast work. And then uh, just kind of try my best. And I, 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 I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I'm learning a lot more about myself than I thought I would. Uh, the evolution that we haven't mentioned is we started the Keep Hustling Shop, which was another thing. And I feel that, you know, that's, that's my brand. So keephustlingshop.com, you can find motivational, inspirational merchandise. And we've kept the price point really low on purpose because we want people to, we basically don't make a profit off the sales, but we want people to, I, I think that if people wake up in the morning and their coffee cup says dreams in sight, you know, or goals in sight never quit or dreams in action. When you go to sleep at night, your flip flops or your slides say dreams in action. Then we you put your head on the pillow. You're going to say, Hey, I got dreams in action and I'm going to keep hustling tomorrow. So I'm having fun with it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. But again, I think that it's about defining and executing. That's it. Yeah, but uh, so like so, but I love the the inception of it. So in April, you found Keep Hustling, and how was the reaction when 
for when people heard you say this the first time, uh, did you get any pushback or did people just say, oh, that's really you, Aaron? Other than people think I was a nutcase because I have five kids and a lot of my plate and running a business and things like that. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think the people who matter most will support you in whatever you do, assuming right. again that it's moral, ethical, and legal. Right. Um, and not, and not dangerous. Right. Um, I, I, listen, I, I built a studio in Queens, New York, which, what you're seeing behind you. I don't know why I'm out of focus now, but what you're seeing behind me, this room, this everything, I, I put it together for a few thousand dollars by watching hundreds of hours of YouTube and I self produce and you know what that's like and things like that. It's just, mm -hmm. I, other than people tell me that I was a complete nutcase, totally nuts. You know, uh, and, and nuts in the, in the best possible way because they don't want me to fail. I, I don't see how this fails. And by the way, if nothing else, my children will have, you know, 50, 60 episodes of their father talking about his life philosophies. I don't think it's a bad thing. No. And so when was the first time you got recognized as the, uh, the New York Wilson? The first time I got recognized. How did that feel? Uh, that's, that's a good question. Um, it doesn't happen often. Um, the first time. Oh, I actually know where I was. I actually know where I was. And this was awesome. Um, I was in LaGuardia Airport. And when I travel or when I do business networking events or appearances or speaking engagements, I wear custom sneakers. They're orange and blue. Orange is the Keep Hustling NY Risk Advisor color, blue is the Gorner Company's color. They got all this painting stuff. I have an amazing guy that does my shoes. But when I travel in airports, I wear bright orange sneakers. And I was, I remember exactly where I was now. I was in the Delta Terminal. I was in, I was going, if you've ever been to LaGuardia, after you come through security, if you make a right turn, right past the Starbucks, there's a, after you get past that food court, there's a long hallway that then you go down an escalator to get to the, some of the gates. My gate was like, I don't know if it's 90, I don't know what gate it is, but I had to make a hooking left, I remember afterwards. And just as I was getting towards the escalator, a guy screams out, that's the keep hustling guy. <laughs> and he said, I recognize you from the NY Risk hat. And he was running to catch a flight and I was running to catch a flight and I didn't have a moment to like embrace it. And I said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I'd love to take a picture or whatever, things like that. And, and then I just ran to my flight. And I, I remember I texted my wife or called my wife because I was doing it on the plane. And I said, someone just recognized me. She's like, no, 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 it was someone you know. I was like, I really have no idea who I am. I don't know how like I did it. I don't know if it was the shoes. I don't know what it was. I had not, and by the way, if you are that person and you're listening to this, or you see this in a social media clip, please reach out to me. I'd love to get dinner or drinks or coffee or send you some swag because you made my day. And by the way, even if you just make up that you're that guy, it would mean a lot to me if you just reached out. Um, I don't know. I was on the... Uh, I was once driving on a highway and I pulled off the exit and I was stopped at a red light and a guy pulled up next to me and said, uh, you're the keep hustling guy. And he noticed my plates. That was pretty cool. It doesn't happen often. I don't know. You know, I, I can tell you this, and this is not too much of a promo for what you're doing in your podcast, but I do believe in it, but we could take it as a promo. The most important place that you can become famous is in your own community and in your own network. And there's nobody, nobody who I meet in the insurance world or in my community and in my extended community circle who doesn't say you're the key hustling guy or the NY risk guy, nobody. And I've only been doing it for three years because you just stay at it and you just become, I don't know, people say it's taken over my identity. Do you, um, do you, um, so when you keep to the identity of keep hustling, is it that you're on social media the whole time or is it that you're wearing the shoes, the sneakers? What are the things that people identify with to keep hustling? I think it's the social media stuff. Social media. Okay. I've been, I've been doing LinkedIn for five or six years now and other stuff for about four. Um, okay. maybe LinkedIn longer, but I think that again, if the keep hustling guy appears every single day and keep hustling, keep hustling, keep hustling, and maybe one day someone is inspired then maybe one day it'll be monetized and it will, you know, make me a few dollars. But other than that, I'm not really sure. So do you think it's helped your business? Um, yeah, I do. If nothing else, then it took a grumpy, stale, 30, 32-year-old 30, depressed guy in his attic during a 
pandemic and inspired him to keep going and to do something different and to have energy every day or as much energy as I can. Wow. So I think that that helps your business. And again, I think that that's part of hustling. I think that part of keep hustling says if you're doing something and you've defined it for your reasons and you're going to keep going through it, even when it's difficult and even when you had a poor night's sleep or even when you slept on an airplane the night before, it, it builds it in you. It just builds the passion and the desire to just keep going. Just keep hustling. And, and and I don't think that you can put a figure on that, a dollars and cents figure. No. So how did it, because what, what I'd love to explain, expound upon is how did this change you? Um, how did it change me? Did you just, you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm rephrasing something you told earlier that, that you learned more about yourself doing the podcast than anything else. So it, it's changed me because I can't stop. What does that mean? It, it, it has made me embrace something that I always believed in. And I feel like, and again, I have, I am not famous. Maybe one day I will become famous. I don't have people. You're famous in your community. People recognize you. Fame only, what it means is just becoming known and you're known. That's right. Bustling. So you are famous. So, so what happens? What happens if I gave it up? What happens if I gave it up? Let, 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 let's, let's get deep into, into, into how people stop hustling, right? What, what happens if you give it up? First, you got to look yourself. First, you got to look your family in the mirror, in the face. Then you got to look yourself in the mirror. And you got to say, why did I do it? And what happens if there's one person who one day was thinking about giving it up? And just because they saw your keep hustling merch or someone or someone somewhere got them to it or they were, how could how could I give up on myself? And by the way, I'm having too much fun. It's fun. I, my closest friends and family who make fun of me for it, I know they do it out of love. But it's fun. I've gotten to. I, I met you. I met people all, from all over the world. And I'm not even that big. The podcast's not even that big. You know what I mean? And it's just like you meet people, and you, if you take a tidbit from from one person or one person reaches out to you, that one comment. You know, everybody. Want, I think everyone wants to become famous because they think that it's fun and you can monetize your life. But I hope I never get to the point where people's comments don't inspire me. Or people reaching out to me doesn't inspire me. I had a guy reach out to me last week who wants to do business together just because he saw some social media content. Now, does it happen? I don't know. But that guy decided in California that he was going to wake up in the morning and reach out to this guy, the hustling guy, the New York risk advisor, for no reason other than he saw something that I said and liked it. So how could I stop? That's how it changed me. It changed me because I finally, I, I always had a purpose. Now I'm just publicizing it, which makes it more real to me concretize it wow that's powerful so what does your family say to all this uh my siblings use it as another reason to make fun of me which is fine <laughs> i have um i'm not sure my mom gets it my father he should rest in peace thought it was comical but i think he would be proud i think he would now be proud now that it's really a thing i think he would be proud um my children love it my children love everything about it. My son sports the merch wherever he goes. My daughter, Aww. uh, I had a, so I printed magnets. They were supposed to be car magnets for the podcast. And it turned out that they didn't work well on cars because I didn't read the fine print. And it said, do not put this outside of the elements or it will bend. So I had a hundred magnets sitting around. And uh, the next thing I know, I got a picture from a friend of mine who was at PTA, in my kid's school of every single locker in my daughter's classroom covered in my magnets. Oh. Uh, I think that some of it, so you'll say some of it was cute. She was in seventh grade. She was the cool kid who had the father. I, I have, you know what? I want my kids to, I want my kids to say my father did something and insurance is really hard to explain to them what they do. I think sometimes as they get older, they know a friend comes over and says, thank you so much. My house had an issue with this, that your father helped me or helped me get my business off the ground. But my kids love it. Um, my wife is starting to embrace it. I think that she was just worried that I was already pulled thin. So how much thinner are you going to pull yourself? Um, but that's her job to worry. She's a Jewish mother, so it's her job to worry too. Um, I think my mom would worry more if she actually knew it, what it was. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Have you had anyone, have you had anyone, um, anyone that's canceled you or critiqued you and, and how did that feel? Um, and how did you handle it? Um, I've had two. I've had two critiques. I'm going to talk about the first one briefly, but I really don't want to get into it because I think that it's just silly. But I think that it's important for people to realize to keep hustling. Um, since October seventh, I've gotten some anti-Semitic feedback oh. um, underneath the hat. Um, we'll take it off because it's bad for the optics in the mid episode. But uh, I'm I'm, a, I'm an openly Orthodox Jew. Um, 
what's ironic about the way that social media works and modern algorithms work is the more people view and comment, the better it is for you. And, and the negative comments stimulate more people viewing and commenting. So what these people don't realize is that when they make a negative, stupid comment at you and everyone starts defending you or their friends say the same thing, that the more views you get, then I can just delete your comment. But my thing, but my post has a better chance of going viral because you and all your friends are going to see it because you decided to comment on my post. So that, 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 you know, when I realized that I was like, bring it on, man. Um, I think the negativity that I've gotten is from the anti hustle culture people who don't understand what I'm trying to do. People see the word hustle. People see the word keep hustling and they think, Oh, this guy says that even if you are sick in bed with the flu, if you don't wake up in the morning and exercise, then you're, then you're a loser. I don't believe that at all. So I, and, and I've tried and some of them it's worked. Some of them it hasn't. I've tried to engage those people because I actually think that those people would say that I'm right. I think that those people would join the, the movement that I'm trying to build right. and say, this is the right view of hustle. I'm not, I'm not going to allow keep hustling to be hijacked by people who misuse the word hustle and turn it into physically abusing themselves, physically, mentally, and emotionally abusing themselves. I'm not going to do that because those people are wrong. And that's not ego. I'm just saying, so, so, so those, that's been somewhat of the negative. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating how um, the negativity actually is a positive for the people. <laughs> no, and I also think that I think that if a person realizes, and my, my my parents raised me this way, so you choose the actions and you choose the consequences. And if you choose the right actions and you're doing things for the right reasons, then the consequences shouldn't be negative or difficult. And I don't want people to attack me for the fact that I'm Jewish. I don't want people to attack me for me trying to do a good thing. If I was doing a terrible thing, then I would hope that they would stand up for what's right. I just haven't figured out yet why I'm doing the wrong thing. And so that's not ego, but it's, I also think that when you get the positive feedback, you have to embrace it because then it kind of fills the battery, fills the tank for when the negative stuff comes. But don't you think it's interesting when you're talking about people that get up in the morning, they do the meditation, they do the cold bath, the hard bath, whatever they're doing. Isn't that in a sense, a negative and a toxic hustle? Could be. No, no, but, but I think it's only toxic. If, I think it's only toxic if it's toxic. You know, I, 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 I have a, there was a guest on the podcast who, who's a four time cancer survivor. And the only thing that got him through, he described on the podcast was the fact that he dreamed of doing an Ironman. He was in shape before he dreamed of doing an Ironman and he pushed himself to levels that most people couldn't or wouldn't or wouldn't stay at it. Is that toxic? No. Is it toxic that this guy got up at four o'clock every time with rain, no. heat? I don't think, I think it's toxic if it doesn't work for the person. I think it's great when people wake up at four o'clock in the morning and have all the energy in the world to do all those things. I just don't think that that making blanket statements about what everyone should do, that's when it becomes toxic. Oh, you know, I like that. you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, again, what, what happens if meditating? Yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to hit it maybe what, what's a hot button topic, but I think it's a good analogy. Ozempic is all the craze right now, right? Right. And there have been studies that there was a study that those weight loss drugs are causing depression. And I heard someone discussing this, a professional, a physician discussing this. And what they said was an interesting, fortunate, unfortunate corollary side effect to a lot of these things is that when a person changes their identity and has such fast, quick weight loss and there's, there, there's so much that's uncertain in their life, that's what causes the depression. Does that mean that the person shouldn't get healthy and take the weight loss drug if they're severely overweight and diabetic and this will probably cause major health issues down the road? No, it just means that it's something that a person needs to be aware of. And I think that it's the same thing with hustle, that if a person is aware only between them and themselves and them and themselves, nobody else, what's really best for them, then you can hustle through anything. I, I, I use this analogy all the time. I think that my wife hustles far more than I do. Far more. And if you look at her, you'd say, most mornings I'm up before her. Most mornings I go to sleep after her. My actual labor hours of work are far more than hers. Yet she hustles much more than I do. Right now she's what she's with our five kids or four out of our five kids. Her hustle when I speak to her at the end of the day is far more than mine, for being honest. And that's defined and redefined. And so... I think the toxic hustle is just when someone is dishonest with themselves. 
That's toxic. The only thing that's toxic is, is when a person is dishonest with themselves. That's it. Wow, that's powerful. It, it, it's the truth, right? I mean, though it's the people who 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 are physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausted from getting up at four o'clock in the morning, but feel that for someone else they have to do it, right? Yeah. No, and I guess that's what I meant with when I was talking about the cold block. And cold that's what, but, but what about for the person that it works? What about for the person that it reversed heart disease, right. cold plunges? Go for it, man. Yeah. That's you. And by the way, you should do it, even if it's uncomfortable. Just not for me. I'm not a cold plunge guy. I'm more of a sauna guy. No, but it's interesting. You're right. It's it's about being honest with yourself. And that's where the rede- redefining your hustle, I think, is so important, is to take the time to listen because sometimes things just change. And changing with it and being honest about the change is a very powerful and honest thing to do. For sure. So. So. Well, we're coming down to close. I wanted to ask you, um, where is Keep Hustling going and what's your vision for it? Oh, that's a loaded question. Um, I would love to uh, have other contributors in the Keep Hustling network. Uh, Keep Hustling is going wherever those who embrace it take it. Um, I, I really hope that it becomes something that inspires others. And I'm not in it to profit. I thankfully have a full-time job. Um, I actually think that there's plenty of ancillary benefits financially that I don't need to worry about monetizing it. Keep hustling is going wherever the people take it. Keep hustling is going to, we're going to stay at it. We're going to keep hustling and we're going to try to inspire people every single day. I don't, I'm not a why person. I'm a how person and I want to get people to where they want to go. And by defining your own hustle, I'd love to, I love to create like a workbook, which helps people kind of define their hustle and then does check-ins. I think that would be an interesting thing. Um, but we're just trying to share the stories of others, of some to inspire others. That's what we're doing. Yeah. And the shop. Keep hustling shop. That's where it's at. It's we'll fun. Put that in the link. We'll put that in the link. Um, so if when you look when you look at your life, because I am at the end of your life, and uh, what would you want, what is what would you want to be known personally and then professionally? And I'm dividing it into two. It doesn't have to be two things, but sometimes doing it in those compartments can help think about what it is you want to be known for at the end of your life. Well, I hope I have a, I have a, I hope I have a very long time to achieve this or to, or to get to this. Um, I think I'm thinking about my father now, so I apologize. Um, we had these conversations often. So uh, yeah, that's um, I'll start with the easier one, which is professionally. Um, I just want to be known by someone who continued my parents' legacy, my father and my mother who should live and be well and did well by doing good. Uh, I, there is nothing, everyone does not have to do business with me. I just don't want anyone to think that we did wrong by them. And I want people to think that they got the best service and the best communication and that I tried to do my best and did well because I have five kids and a big mortgage. Um, personally, I just want my family and friends to know that I worked as hard as I could and I loved them as best as I could. And I don't want, I don't want anyone to ever think that I didn't hustle for them. And I know that that sounds cliche because we're talking about keep hustling, but you know, at the end of a very long weekend, you know, we just had a four day weekend for July 4th weekend. And when you look around and I was like, it's exhausting. But I said to my wife, like our kids had, our family had memories, our kids had memories and we do our best and we do our best. And sometimes we'll fail. And I, I hope that my wife and children and parent, my mother, she should live in me well and my brothers and everyone, my close friends, everyone just says that I hustled hard for them and I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Just try our best and do well by doing good. That's it. Do well by doing good. It was my father's, it was my father's uh, life motto. Was it really? I love it. Yeah. Do well by doing good. That's a really good one. And keep hustling is a very good one too. Uh, thank you so much and I want you to keep hustling and keep with your message because I think it's such an important message I love the way you're you're redefining and rethinking hustling and how to actually implement it into our life or be comfortable with it so um, I want to thank you for this interview it was really insightful thank you again for having me Welcome. thank you for listening to become famous podcast if you like what you heard Please subscribe, rate, and review our show. Your support helps us keep bringing you valuable insights on achieving fame in your industry. Keep shining and see you next time.